Welcome to Cool to Craft. I'm Tiffany Windsor. And I'm Heidi Borchers. What are you doing? I'm going to sparkle and shine here today. <laughs> oh, I love it when I sparkle and glitter. Today's show is all about sparkling and glittering. So I'm going to give her a glitter tattoo because I'm going to make sure that she's very sparkly today. Because I want to be cool. I'm cool, too. <laughs> what are you making on today's show? I have a great uh, necklace made out of glue and glitter. It is the coolest technique. You'll love it. And Candace Jedrowitz is creating a sparkle fairy. I love what she's oh, it's done. it's so cute. You know, you inspire her with all of your soda cans. And she has sparkled up a fairy today. It is fabulous. Absolutely <laughs> fabulous. <laughs> and I am getting into the glitter and sparkle mood. Can you I have think, a mood? Can you have a glitter I think we're already mood? there. Oh, you've already got glitter on oh, your face. <laughs> I'm already there. I am creating this t-shirt right here, the one that I'm wearing, because I'm cool. I'm don't, cool. <laughs> don't go away. We'll be right back. Welcome back. I'm getting glittered. I'm sparkling and shining her today. I so think we're all done. This is a tulip body art and it's a tattoo. Mm -hmm. And it's glitter. And it'll stay for a couple days. Oh, I like <laughs> that actually. That is so cool and it was so easy because you just put on the adhesive first mm -hmm. and then you patted on the glitter. Mm -hmm. And it, um, the kit comes with all kinds of stencils so you're not limited to having to create it yourself. That's cool. <laughs> glitter comes in so many different ways, and I never even realized that until we started talking about doing a glitter and sparkle show. Right. You already have it on your face, too. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what's fun about glitter, too, is that it, it just makes you giddy. Mm -hmm. It makes you giggle and laugh, and it's fun, and it's okay that it's all over. Mm -hmm. There are many different ways that you can purchase glitter. There's assortments. Also, you can buy it individually. This is um, Crafty Chica Glitter. I love all her colors. Beautiful. You can buy it by the sheet. This is a shimmer transfer sheet where you actually iron it on, which is what I did on my shirt and Heidi's shirt, because she's cool, too. I'm cool. <laughs> and uh, today, I'm going to show you how to make a necklace out of glitter and glue. You actually mix them together. It's a very cool technique from the uh, Mama Aline vintage days, so um, I'll show you how to do that. It just takes a few ingredients to make the beads from glue and glitter. You're gonna need a cup to mix, you're gonna need a craft stick. I'm using the Aline's Easy Flow Tacky Glue and some glitter, and mine today is the Crafty Chica Glitter. Really pretty colors, I like the fineness of it. Also, I'm using a piece of the shrink plastic. It's clear, this way I can uh, squeegee it on and then um, peel it off. So I really like the just the clear. You can use a silicone sheet, but I did notice like mine has a wrinkle in it and the wrinkle showed when I went to pull it off. So be sure you get a, a nice and new silicone sheet to, to put you, if you're gonna use that, because you can use that over and over again. So we just need to start mixing. Take our cup and we're gonna pour a couple of tablespoons and I just, just try and guess it a little bit You know, that might be one, two tablespoons, and then let's do some pink. I actually like using the cap here, and I just do a couple of, maybe, a, I figure that's like a teaspoon, maybe a couple teaspoons, pour it in, and then just mix it. just until it's completely mixed and then you're going to pour it out on your plastic sheet or whatever you're going to use if you're going to use your silicone I again have a, a sheet of shrink art plastic and um, shrink plastic 
and it's the clear. I know that it comes off of that. It also probably comes off the opaque, but I know it comes off this one because that's what I've been using. So get out as much as you can out of your cup. And I also want to show really quick, don't throw that away. Save that because I want you to be able to use that cup over and over again. Here's the cup where I used the, um, the a day or so ago, and it just peels right off. So be sure you save the cup. Just peel off the uh, the glitter and the glue, and you can use it uh, the cup over and over again. Use a um, credit card or something you know like a something. This was a gift card I never used, and you're just going to squeegee it across in a thin, even line. And you want to make sure that you get it even all the way across. And if I have a little bit on my squeegee, I just make sure that I get it as even as possible. Now, you're going to set that aside to dry overnight. And it does take overnight. I haven't found it yet where I could use it uh, before that. I've got one here that I did last night. In the silver, make sure it's dry. Start from one corner and pull it off. And if it gets stuck anywhere, it means it's probably not completely dry. And the center is usually where it takes longer to dry. There it goes. There it goes. And you don't want to be too hard on it because it does kind of stretch out a little bit. But it is coming off. And I can see it's still a little bit um, milky there. And normally I would probably leave it a little bit longer, but we got it off. And now we're ready to cut some rectangles to make our beads. So we're just going to cut however wide you want and maybe an inch there's so many things that you can do with this sheet once it uh, once it dries. This is going to create my bead so I'm going to use a little bit of the uh, Aline super thick tacky glue to help me put it together. I'm going to put a little bit of glue on the top edge so that when I go to wrap it, it'll just glue. You can use like pencil. Don't wrap it too tight because you want it to come back off. And just hold it in place. I'm going to slide it off. And there you have your bead. Now when you put it on to a necklace, move this over a little bit. I actually put this on beading wire, and in between each bead, I actually put a glass bead. This is the little blast, uh, black uh, glass bead. Now, this is the fun about this um, the glitter sheets that you can make with the glue, is that you can actually put them in the um, in, a, in a die cutting machine, and you can you can cut them. So this is what I made the flower out of is the die cut uh, flowers, and then also you can you can paper punch them. So there's all kinds of things that you can do when you mix the, the glue and the glitter together. It's so easy to do, it's so simple, and it's just by using 
the Aline's Tacky Glue, the Easy Flow, and Glitter. Super, super simple. So what I love about this technique is you can create any color combinations that you want to. Right, and it's so easy that the kids can do it. I mean, and there's just so many things that you can do. You're not limited to, to roll these either. I mean, you could actually even put the, the glitter onto beads and things like that. I and mean, it's just such a cool technique to use the glitter and the glue. You could actually wear that with yeah, what you could. have on today. Yeah, I thought about that it's too. Perfect. Of course, we had we had a necklace um, fail <laughs> last no, last just, week because it didn't latch. No, it just didn't. It got caught in my hair. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was easy. That yeah. one worked perfectly. Yeah. I like that. Isn't that cool? And also, did you see that I put it off? If I really put on correctly, I put the flower off center a little bit. I like that. Mm -hmm. I like where it was I off do a little too. bit. Cool idea. Thank you. Candice Jedrowitz was inspired by Heidi's Eco Crafting. <laughs> <laughs> And what she has to share with you today is a sparkle fairy. And what is she making it from? She's making it from soda cans. Cool. Thanks, Tiffany. Hi, everyone. Welcome to my studio. What? I'm sorry. I have something on my shirt. Oh. <laughs> It's just a fairy. That's a little fairy. I didn't mean to scare you. So I started out making these tiny fairy pins, which I just love. They're so adorable. And I wanted to show how I made them, but these are so small and I have to work so close. I don't think you'd be able to see the detail. So I came up with a larger version that can be hung in a window and be all sparkly when the sun hits it. That's where I'm going to start. I'm going to show you a large version. And that requires a can. And like Eco Heidi Borchers shows us, I started cutting the can open with a craft knife and now I'm going to finish with a pair of scissors. When I figure where my figure is going to be on this can, I want to cut right next to it. So say I want to use just these colors up here for the body of my fairy. I'm going to cut down here like that and then start to go around. And the reason for that is most of this is going to be my wings. Let me show you. The wings take up quite a bit. So I want to have the color that I want to use for the body, because see how tiny the body is? And then the rest of the can for that. And I already have a tiny body piece cut out, and I'm going to shape it. I want to keep the bottom fairly wide and it's kind of going to be a flower shape like a little a skinny little tulip that I'm going to scallop down here just like that I'm going to take off this corner here doesn't have to be perfect but I kind of want it to be even if you don't want the sharp edges, just keep clipping, or you can start to sand. I take off some of the sharp edges with a fingernail file. That seems to work really well. Now I want to trace where my wings will be. And I'm just gonna hold her down like that. And I'm going to start almost at the top. To start the wings. And if they're not even, you can certainly trim them. And mine are 
very often not quite even or symmetrical, and that's okay with me. Now I'm going to cut this out. I'm going to start over here. And I'm going to cut inside of the red because I don't want the red showing on my wings. So if you're doing it this way, you could make the wings extra large and then have plenty of room to cut inside the line for the wings. And the reason that I came out at the top was I want my headpiece with its attachment wire to go through both the wings and the body for extra strength. Check this. Yep, I think that's fine. Here are my wings all cut out. And now what I want to do is give them a little bit of texture. So I'm going to use something soft. It's the back side of a sanding sponge. And I'll do it this way so you can see. I'm going to take a pencil and just draw a straight line down one of the wing parts and do some kind of veiny things coming off of the center line like the dragonflies have. And the big ones. And this should just be, for me, loose and flowing. I don't want to try to make it look exactly like a wing. Um, I am just suggesting that this might be a dragonfly wing or a fairy wing. And there they are, pretty as you please. The next step is to glitter them, and this is a two-part process. First, I'm going to put lots of glitter on, and I mean lots. Oodles and oodles. And now I'm going to hold it down and spread it out to the edges. And the reason I do this, the reason that I want to have a single fairly thick layer is because glitter glue won't stick to metal. So I want to be able to peel the whole thing off and glue it back on with a metal glue. So I'm going to set that over here to dry and show you one that's already dried. <laughs> I had one that was already dried. Oh, it's this one. Okay. So I've already loosened this up, but you'll see it comes off very easily. And of course, if you didn't want it to, it, it would be peeling off. try to get it off all in one piece, but if it doesn't, it's not a great big deal. This one seems to be 
having trouble in it. It might have had a place where there wasn't glue. There we go. Now the second part of the process is the same, except that you'll do it with a good jewelry glue. This is what I used. That's so pretty. It's too bad it wasn't a little stronger so that you could just use it by itself. Here's one that I have already glued. And now I want to attach its little body like that. The one hole that they will share, the wings and the body, will be right at the top. And that's where the wire for the headpiece will go through. So I'm going to hold those together and give it a punch with my, oh, I don't know, that's about a sixteenth of an inch, I think. Come on, you can get on there. There we go. Double check your position. And you want to give it a good quarter inch from the edge. And the reason for that is when you're bending the wires, wrapping them around, that will tear very easily and you don't want that. Okay, so now I'm gonna put in the holes for my arms, which are going to be wire as are the legs. So let's go just a little bit below the hole for the head. And they're close together, but that's okay. They just shouldn't be right on top of one another. Mm. And there we have it. So now I have the holes for the arms and the legs and the head. And here is what they look like. Oop, this way. So they all look about the same. Now for the head, I'm using a much longer wire. It's oh, probably at least a foot. And I'm going to do kind of the same thing, except I'm going to be making several loops for hair. So I figured seven is a, is a good amount. So I'm just going to keep moving it. I'll turn here to show you. I'm just going to keep moving it around. And making loops. You don't want them to be too far away from one another. And it doesn't really matter which way they go because you're going to be weaving a smaller while with wire with lots and lots of beads. And one more. And that's going to be your hair curly wire with lots and lots of beads. All right, so that's the top of my head right there. And I also want there to be a bit of cheek. So I'm just going to turn it out like that and then round it back in. Turn it out and just kind of swing it around there. And here's where I'm working on the shape of my face. I'll try to hold it so you can see it. That looks pretty good. Got something weird going on with the hair on that side, but that's okay. 
All right, I'm going to say right about there. So I'm going to give those two wires a twist. And I'm just going to hold it in place there. <laughs> Poor lopsided headed little thing. One more twist because I don't want that proportion to change. But if it does, I can certainly go back and bend a little more. There we go, little cherub face. Yes, the fairies are amassing at my house. I've gathered quite a few of them. I hope you enjoyed the larger version of these little guys, and I hope you'll check out my written tutorial, which will show you how to make the pins and how I like to put a special treat on the back of each pin just for the wearer. I hope that you're inspired to try something like this, and I hope if you do, I get to see it. You can email me at candice at cooltocraft.com and send me your photos and your story. I would love to hear and see what you're doing. Thanks everyone, have a special day. I love what Candace does with that glitter for the wings for the fairies. They're so magical, I love them. I know, she is so creative and I love how we all inspire each other because when I see your necklace, I think, oh, okay, I want to do a project like that. Or we see Candace's project. I'm thinking though that my project is what inspired you, but you went the simple way. I did. <laughs> I'm using the Tulip Fashion Glitter Shimmer Transfer Sheets for my project. What's cool about this is that if you like glitter, but you don't like it all over the place, these shimmer transfer sheets the glitter is contained, mm -hmm. but yet you still get that sparkle and shine. Right. And all you have to do, well, I'm going to show you how it's done, but it's really easy to just iron these on, be cool, to iron <laughs> on to fabric. Mm -hmm. In celebration of sparkle and glitter, I am using Tulips Fashion Glitter. Now these are shimmer transfer sheets that have the glitter on the back and all you need to do is cut them out and iron them on. What I love about these is that you get the effect of the glitter without all the sparkles going everywhere. So you will want to select the color out of the package that you want to work with. And I went searching in my craft tool box and to see what sort of stencils I could find. Now these are just paper letters that were from a scrapbook page that I'm using for the smaller lettering in case I want to do any sort of letters in a smaller space. And I just peeled these off and transferred or actually traced them on to my glitter sheet. You can also use regular stencils. This is a very big wall stencil that I like the size of this lettering. And of course if you have any sort of die cutting machines that would be the absolute easiest. So what you want to do is just lay your patterns onto your sheet. So this glitter has a, a clear over sheet on the top so you can do all of your tracing right onto that sheet and cut it out and it's not going to affect your glitter at all. So just trace around depending on what size that you want to do. And I have a little bit larger letter here that I thought would be easier to show you how to cut. Very very simple, nice pair of sharp scissors very easy to cut your glitter sheet. On this particular stencil, you'll notice that the 
lines don't connect completely, but that's not a problem because you just can cut them to make all of the lines connect. So keep that in mind when you are selecting your patterns for your lettering. So you can see how quick and easy that is. So we're going to be cool today. I've cut out my cool lettering here. What I do on my t-shirts is I fold them in half and mark them with a pin so that I know exactly where my center point is. And I find it so much easier if I don't have to line up these letters completely. So I just want to kind of get an idea, but I'm going to turn them a little bit so we have some really playful lettering. But again, taking a look at that center mark there to be sure that I have my letters in the center of my t-shirt. Following the package instructions, I have washed the t-shirt first. Wash and dry your t-shirt. Do not use any softener in the washer or the dryer. So now it's time to take off that plastic layer on the top, and I found I'm just using a push pin to get that started. Once you get it started, it's really easy to peel it back. It's just that first little bit. There we go. Getting that next letter started here. I think the plastic pieces that are left over are really cute for some sort of mixed media project. So don't toss those away. We'll find something to put those on for a really cool mixed media project and we can paint over them. So just double checking, make sure that I have this centered the way that I want. I think I like that. I'm going to go ahead and take my pin out of the center here because I want a nice smooth surface for ironing. So what you want to do, it is suggested on the packaging that you use an ironing cloth and I have just grabbed a piece of cotton for my ironing cloth. I think I want that up just a smidge here. It's cool. I have my iron set to a dry iron and it I'm ironing to the hottest temperature that I can for the shirt. So keep that in mind depending on if you're using a cotton t-shirt or some other blends that you need to set your iron to whatever that base fabric is. Quick and easy, just want to take a quick check and see if there's any edges that I've missed here. You can see how fast that goes. I think my L needs a little bit here. And that is all there is to creating a glitter design on your t-shirts. I want to try this on an album. There are so many different ways that you can use your glitter sheets and as I mentioned what I love about the shimmer transfer sheets are that you have the effect of glitter without a lot of glitter mess.
So isn't that easy to just be able to iron on the glitter? Super, super simple. Now I don't want anybody to be confused on the technique that I did because you cannot iron what I did. I mean, it looks like the same thing, the sheets and everything, but you can't iron them. You can just roll them into beads and things like that. So this is fabulous. I love it. So if you're wanting to do Heidi's technique, think of it more in terms of gluing it onto maybe some of your crafting projects right. or mm -hmm. not really having to, to oh you gosh, just, I'm going to confuse everyone even more. You can't iron it. You right, iron there you go. Because yeah. I was going to say, well, you're gluing together to make the layers, right, but, but the difference can't. is you can't iron it. Mm -hmm. So with my technique, you can iron. Mm -hmm. And in thinking about that, what I thought is, what else can I put this on and can I iron around corners? And that's what I've done on the, the album and here. It worked great. Oh, it worked fabulous. The great thing about this glitter, too, is that it's very thin so that when you're wearing it or you're trying to iron it around these these corners or edges, it's very flexible. Yeah, it's not really, um, like, really it's not, harsh and, it's not stiff. and stiff, yes. Mm -mm. So... Cool project. Everything is cool, <laughs> cool, cool today. Just because we're cool. <laughs> <laughs> so, as we mentioned at the top of the show, there's many different ways that you can add glitter and sparkle to your creative projects from glitter assortments to body, body art <laughs> to individual glitters to glue and glitter right which is the vintage Aline's technique but what I want to do is then before we wrap up today's show is go back and actually show the project so tell us again about your project okay my project is a necklace that's made out of glue and glitter you mix it together you spread it out and let it dry and then you roll it into beads and um, also you can put it through like your Sizzik or your die cutting machine and easy to do, fun to do. It's a vintage technique. Candice Jedrowitz created a sparkle fairy. What I love about this project is she added just a touch of sparkle to the fairy wings and it's a great way to recycle your soda cans. And not only is it sparkly, it's magical. <laughs> it's a magical fairy. <laughs> And I created the iron-on appliques with the Tulip Fashion Glitter Shimmer Transfer Sheets. This is a great way to iron on your glitter. There's no fuss, there's no mess. All you need to do is just draw your design onto these sheets, cut them out, and iron them on. Super simple. Wow, I have really enjoyed getting all glittered up today. <laughs> I have too. It's fun to be sparkly and shiny. It is. I want to invite all of our Cool to Craft viewers to join us at Facebook. That would be facebook.com slash cool to craft. Head on over there right now to leave your comment about today's show. We would love to hear from you. And invite your friends too. Also, I invite you to check out cooltocraft.com. This is where you are going to find all of our archived videos, all of our featured projects, our blogs, everything, our giveaways, everything you need to know about what's going on at Cool to Craft. Right. Well, are we finished getting glittered and sparkled and you want another, Do you want another one? Let's put right one up here, here. Right here. <laughs> okay, I think I can do one right here. Push hard. Are you sure? It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> Oh, no, it's gonna stick there. Uh oh. There you, go. you know what I did before I came on today is I put lotion on my hands. So you're gonna have to get, oh, a, have a, to get another, another one. one. Okay. All right, so she's gonna <laughs> run off and do that. Thanks again for joining us today for Cool to Craft. Get creative, get inspired, and be cool. cool. <laughs> bye bye. Bye. <laughs>